Have you ever wondered what things you could do to speed up a science victory? Like buying spaceports with faith or chopping out space lasers in tundra cities? Because we will get there in this episode. So stay with me through this gameplay to learn more about these and other tips. I am bummed out that we didn't get monumentality in the classical era. Generally, a strong early game wins over a strong end game. So it is important to be able to expand fast and early and at a low cost. Monumentality is a golden age dedication that guarantees a strong start to any civilization by allowing the purchase of civilian units like settlers and builders, but also trade units and archaeologists with faith. And it also provides extra movement to these units, making expansion even faster. Monumentality is a key strategy to any victory type, except maybe for like religion and in some cases dom domination. Monumentality starts in the classical era, around like turn 40-50, continues into medieval era that could start around turn 100, and ends with the Renaissance era, at which point you could be buying archaeologists with faith, and those units are pretty expensive. It lasts for one-third of the game or more, like 150 turns. So reaching monumentality and having enough faith to take advantage of it is a game-changer. All right, the plan for the next like 30 turns or until the medieval era is to hold the expansion efforts because we need that monumentality. I think it's worth it. Maybe one more city settled around the desert to the south for another diesel holy site of a potential plus 20 culture faith. I'm going to upgrade the current sites, holy sites, upgrade religion to a new belief and focus on reaching the golden age so we can use the faith to buy settlers, builders, apostles, and whatever else. By the time medieval era comes, I'm hoping to have ancestral hall with feudalism unlocked and serfdom policy plugged in, which gives five charge builders, making the catch-up expansion super fast because every city will come with that builder. I hope Oracle will be completed. Next wonder I would plan on would be Mausoleum of Felicarnassus for its great engineer charges. I don't care so much for the yields. It is important to get that extra great engineer charge because your wonder rush will be so much easier. Governor titles will go to Pingala first and then Magnus for the provision title to again help with the expansion. You can't really undervalue the value of chops. I mean, <laughs> yields are great, but if you want less turns in the game and move faster, you have to chop. I mean, we just built an oracle in like very few turn turns, and it allows you to place other district like a theater, splendid theater square, which will add to the era score that we're going to be hunting down throughout. You know, I'm second guessing hiring Amani as my first governor, but you know what? We get in that era score and we open it up the map. Bologna, for example, and it'll be easier to levy the units in case in case we need them. So in this case, Bologna is ours. We've got era score. I might as well pick another city state and get the suzerainty there. The early game is the easiest to get the suzerainty. You just need three envoys, two from a money and one when you meet a city state or fill, fulfill a, a quest. Chopping is requires a builder, right? So I rather build a builder and then chop out a district then invest production and time. Here's an example of growing this city to pop four 
so I'm able to place a canvas at that cost. And then once it's pop four, I can actually reduce it to pop three by building a settler, for example, but the district is already down. Another thing I do nonstop is trading with AI. And that's why it's easier to do on deity level because AI actually has gold and stuff to trade like great works. On prince level, might be a whole different story. One of the biggest um, currencies and kind of an exploit, right, is buying up diplomatic favor early and then selling it later so don't forget to do that i think it's a it's it's an exploit but it helps right i mean come on it's a game enjoy it i'm gonna pick feudalism beeline to it nine turns hopefully less chop out the campus no reason to wait plus we're gonna put a farm in there anyway Constantinople is growing, so Pingala is going in. We don't want to wait six turns for a holocide, especially this holocide is going to earn 60, right? Culture and faith in during those six turns. I need a harbor for the mausoleum. Hopefully we can chop out mausoleum there. That's why I moved Magnus there as well. In the meantime, still exploring. Never stop exploring, but also never stop settling. <laughs> as they say. I feel like I overcompensating now for the <laughs> for the era score like in the last era. We actually getting a little overboard. Now I'm out of district spots here, right? Slots. So I am going to harvest cattle. It's gonna get me to six and then gonna improve those olives and I'm going to harvest that marsh and get the population of Constantinople to seven, which will allow me to build a government plaza and obviously ancestral hall, just as planned. Nothing, I'm just marveling at these ridiculous sites. I mean, what is up? This one is only 10 though. I did. I was planning to build farms there. I'm going to place my fourth city here so I can reach that seven holy site. It'll grow to like 10 anyway for the adjacent districts and a couple of farms there. So, and you would think that, and see, now it's time to sell some diplomatic favors so we can get some gold to buy that uh, beautiful tile for the holy site. But you would think that this city sucks, but it does have access to iron there and the little piggies are going to help the city grow. But this is going to be my number two production city, basically, because the size of this city will allow it to have a high production with an industrial zone there and whatnot. I think it'll be pretty, pretty diesel. And that holy site that takes 55 turns will be chopped out in two. I did pick Exodus of the Evangelist as a dedication in the classical era, so I might as well convert a couple of uh, sieves. And I'm thinking I'm going to get a cross-cultural um, dialogue belief for science, because our science is way behind our culture. And I'm a fan of balance, you know, it's a good thing, yin yang type thing. But here is unboosted feudalism, never built six farms there, even though farms with Byzantium with Theodore actually make total sense, but can't plan everything. So that means we can, oh, of course, I just finished the builder instead of holding out for the five charges but that's okay mistakes happen it's not a big deal we do have enough chops here for the mausoleum i mean we have three woods we have stone right there three woods and a stone that should be should be pretty good and i could probably lure a great engineer when the time comes i definitely have plenty of faith 
um, to purchase one. Easy to evangelize um, the religion because I'm going to go with cross-cultural dialogue, like I mentioned. And I'm going to hold off on the fourth evangelizement <laughs> um, for the next era. The next era score because you're fully... Nice, got a builder. Your fully upgraded religion gives you like th three era score, I think, or something like that. So you can save it for the next era. In the meantime... I'm just going to get a couple of apostles and start converting, maybe Japan, Portugal. And I'm going to get a cheap missionary here so that it converts the new cities, my own cities, pretty fast and cheap. No need to increase the cost of apostle unnecessarily. Just getting the population up to the district limit pop, like seven. Put a district and then do whatever else you want with the city. Um, like I'm probably gonna pop out a settler at uh, in Constantinople at this point. Government Plaza is in pro production. It's only three turns. Ancestral Hall is gonna be easy to build as well. Here is another example of a poorly growing city right because there isn't enough food it's only one food it's not enough to, for growth so identify the tiles that are available right there so we can first obviously we need gold again using the well this time i'm selling open borders why not but there are a couple of tiles here we can purchase and get some food going for the city yeah <laughs> another error score holy crap we're already three over and we still have like 20 turns to go just another example of how we chop out districts one two you don't even need magnus for this type of work and districts you can't buy them right until like moksha or reina so chopping them out this early is the only way to rush them we gotta get provision for Magnus and get him ready for the uh, settler purchases. Here we got an extra farm, 16 yields there. Now I want to get another city. There are a couple of spots here. I definitely want to put a city here, but the production here is going to be... I can't even chop out the solar side there. Here, on the other hand, looks like we can reach Desert Holy Side there as well. So, boom, medieval era, turn 91. So, we got some engineering tech as well with it. Perfect. Guess what we're going to pick? Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the mentality. I'm not sure. But I'm going to just build the first round of settlers by rather in every city because I want to expand fast. Nikamedia, I'm going to get it to pop four to build another district. So we're going to hold off on that. Keep bu building farms at Constantinople because I want it to grow to like pop 10 for my next district. All right, finally got to the next government. Let's get monarchy going. The people are feeling enthusiastic, even though you know what? I changed my mind. Let's go with theocracy. This is actually the government that the government of my choice nowadays. I used to go with Merchant Republic most of my games, but now faith is king. Now I just want to boost diplomatic service by establishing an alliance with Takugawa. I think doesn't really matter, except that cultural alliance would have a negative impact because. That's the one alliance I don't want with Takugawa because his cities are very close and I'm hoping I'm going to flip a couple of them. And with the cultural alliance, neither one of you is exerting loyalty pressure on each other, which we will use later in this game. I'm going to throw down a couple of uh, my first cities right on the border to backstop. Any thought that Portugal or Japan might have of expanding any further 
towards my coveted lands. All right, this is actually the actual start of the medieval era in the game, which is fine. We got a couple of cities to settle. There are several resources here, turtles and horses. And we're going to sell a boatload of horses to the AI. They'll love it. They'll eat it up or, or, or ride it for that matter. And what I can do here is build a couple of holy sites. Bring this up to a splendid holy site very easily. Something like that. Same goes for Odessa. I actually, I'm so lucky here. It's kind of ridiculous um, in the way this map is set up. This means this is going to be eight production, right? With scripture policy very easily. And that's why we have a missionary here exactly for this purpose. Because now that we have a religion, this holy site would be showing full production. I actually wonder if it would change if I do it again. Eh, maybe next turn. This is about the good time to look at the appeal. Even in science, I look to build natural parks. National parks are great for amenities. And as your empire grows, amenities are going to be more and more of an issue. You can see there's plenty of appeal here that we can definitely use. Like for example, this diamond right here, I mean, this is going to go high in appeal anyway, if I put a holy site here and maybe a farm later on with civil engineering on these hills. There could be... Oh, here we go, the volcano park. Bunch of things we can do. Our income is not great, but that's because... <laughs> that's because we don't have any commerce hubs still. Turn 100. That's, but considering that we just expanded, we just got four new cities, turn 100, usually turn 100, 10 cities, right? That's the trend. We have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cities. There are a couple of more spots here, like this one I identified. I mean, this is going to be hard to develop at first, but same thing, the holy site here is going to be insane. Uh, I could go here. Yeah, I don't want to build it next to a volcano and then get it gets destroyed every time. But I'm waiting to... I don't know what how I can build this holy site with Sinope. Because Sinope has no chops. <laughs> but it does have a pretty fast growth. I might throw like a mine here. There's another mine right here. Because if I have so much food, it's not going to be a problem. Grandmaster's Chapel. You know, more faith. And um, I can buy units with faith. Um, helps in a pinch, just in case. Faith production. I mean, 164. <laughs> uh, culture. I mean, I don't know what's happening with Filippo here. I think he's dealing with some serious barb problem. Uh, I mean, they have skirmishes going against warriors here. That's not good. I mean, he's got two cities. Is Madrid going to fall? That's insane. And it's probably the barbs that are taking him out. Must be the barbs because, I mean, she would be like here. Her unit's troops would be like on the border. and They're not. And all this on... And here is the... Here is the barb outpost. All of this area, right? I mean, unsettled in both ways. Unsettled as in the city sense and also rebellious when it comes to the barbs. So settle as fast as you can. That's why I'm like kind of concerned about this tundra. I already had a barb camp spawned here once. I feel like they're going to spawn again. I'm thinking this... Would be a cool 
spot for a city. I'm also thinking that I want to build this network of canals here. Here, right? Maybe we'll be able to put a Panama Canal here, going through here and off into, I assume I'm going to have a passage going out. Now the border cities, same thing. There's plenty of opportunity here to build a bunch of farms and you understand that this is going to grow to like six, four, six, whatever, because we're definitely going to have some districts here. A lot of opportunity, a lot of opportunity. So this land is fertile. In the sense of uh, wonders, we just got to machinery. Kilwa Kisiwani. Kilwa Kiss Me Honey because we are doing pretty well on the envoy front. Didn't get a Padana. A Padana would make it easier because we get two envoys for every wonder in the city though. So, but here, once I got, well, once I, I'm, get, I'm done with the mausoleum, I'm gonna be able to, I might have to get rid of this engineer and get it myself so that I'm able to go to the next one, uh, which will be Imatap, I guess, who will help us rush uh, kill Wikisiwani. Because the bonus that you get, I mean, 30% is just too, too good. 30% from city-states, it's just too good. So I'm going to pay special attention to the quests as well. Some of these quests are possible, others are not. But it just doesn't look like AI is really like trying <laughs> in this game to take suzerainty off. So I, I think I have a good chance. I think I have a good chance. I want to make sure I get enough Commerce Hub built so that we can start earning great merchant points because merchants, I mean, look at it. AI really does not prioritize merchants it looks like we're going to be pretty good on admirals <laughs> uh probably engineers and then merchants the rest of them uh we're, not, we're doing pretty well we're doing pretty well so this is a chill game it's such a chill game love it so what is our plan for the next 50 turns for the next 50 turns it's just developing it's developing infrastructure and building up cities. Ideally, governor-wise, I got Moksha already. I want to go to Divine Architect. So three governor titles. So I can start building purchasing districts with faith. So easy for the new cities. I want to also get to cartography and start exploring and maybe settle a couple of cities outside of my continent because I'm going to start planning on some chops. Like when you see Tundra with this number of chops, you can tell, you can immediately make a decision to build a spaceport city because three chops with no Magnus is a laser. Because by that time, one chop is 200 production by the time you get to... Uh, laser tech, whatever it's called. So I'm going to preserve all of these chops. But, well, that was underwhelming. <laughs> Double the production, though, on that tile. Perfect. Theocracy is awesome. I just wish we didn't have an extra military policy slot there, although it works sometimes but this is our setup 37 faith from scripture sure yeah you know what's up the time has come to build or start building rather kilwa have a spot by the way that spot between two uh wonders right there you know what's going on in there data square Second promotion or title for Moksha, we're almost there. When you don't know what to build, just build a builder 
you can always use a builder or run a district project. Why not? It will provide more faith in this case when we need faith because we have monumentality. It can provide more gold in case of commerce hubs. It can provide more scientist points or science if you're in a pinch. The easiest way to get to monumentality in classical era is to pick a sieve that sieve that has a unique unit and improvement uh, from the get-go, like Cree, right? Like a scout and a mechawap that you can build right away. It gives you a boatload of error score. Byzantine Empire, not so much. I mean, Dromon takes a little while. Hippodrome takes a little while. But hey, I got a chariot out of it. Nice. The Rastafari movement is mo growing pretty good. Pretty good. We're all smoking together. This is going to be a nice little town. Uh, look at that campus spot, right? And easy to chop it out. I have wood, one, two, and a stone right there. How easy is that? Super easy chops. Um, and I can just buy a library, university, and the lab. Super easy. Science is growing. Science is half of our culture, but we're getting a significant chunk from the beliefs. At least a third of science is coming from the beliefs now. Or well, maybe a quarter. Sometimes uh, the guys ask, like, how far should the cities be apart? Dude, I place them where I can fit them basically i don't i mean i do look for decent spots like in this case right it's a horrible spot in the middle of the desert but that holy site is diesel and i'm going to have two national parks here the city is not gonna grow much i mean it might actually come to think of it look at all these tiles <laughs> and fish um so well okay well, this is not bad, but when it comes to settling locations, you have to be very, very, I mean, I, I, when you're a beginner, right, you're looking for good stuff. You're looking for good stuff right away. As you advance, though, through the game, eh, you look for different things, and those things uh, become very specific to a city you want to build, things you want to build in that city and also the sieve you're playing so there are all these factors that just come with experience basically so i do have a video on settling your first city but it's for beginners you know you look for stuff you get used to identifying the spots and then you take that next step you get to a point where you know exactly what to do what to build and in what order and where to settle your cities whether it needs to be settled right there on the luxury or it needs to be settled next to it so you can work that tile it really really depends once you build oracle mausoleum epidana kilwa the next thing you want to build is coliseum coliseum is hugely important right like amenities culture this thing is just decent very very s tier type of wonder that you can build and it's cheap relatively cheap and after that forbidden city patala big ben those three are extra policy government policy wonders and extra government policies i mean you can't put a price on that because it's a exponential uh, type of bonus to the yields and production and so those wonders are key i think in the successful development of your empire on deity level at least i mean <laughs> you can build any wonders you want on prince and some turns later
we get to the Patala Palace. Astronomy's unlocked. What else we unlock? Great Engineer Isidore. That's the first Wonder Engineer. Engineer who can rush wonders. Super important. Killway is almost done. So we're going to spend the charges on Patala. At this point, we're running pretty decent culture and science. 24 cities converted. I'm not really pushing for it, but... If I can, I want to keep that number at like 30. Uh, each big city will provide science per four followers. So it really works out well. And we have Portugal and Japan pretty much locked. But China, yeah, I don't know if I want to spend my effort and Vietnam for that matter. And it's funny because... <laughs> Those are the strongest religions in the world, apparently. Because the rest of them are kind of lame. So I need to do some exploration and discovery. This not-so-useless city and Kira has a spot for a natural park, national park. It already has a library in there, and I'm going to buy a university. So it it's paying off. It's paying off. My gold income is kind of shitty. I don't know where to put this writers. So the game is kind of uh, in flux right now. But I am making my way, experimenting, you know, playing around with things. I mean, just keep looking at this. Holy sites. Holy sight. I mean, this is some... I, I just going to like hover over from now and again and just look at things and marvel and be proud of myself basically one of the worst frustrating feelings in the game is when you lose your wonder to an ai but that's why you don't wake up grab a brush and put a little makeup here we go patala palace is ours and this is how it's done what else is ours? Boom, Petra. And have you ever noticed a little camel? It's live. It's moving. It's really cool. But that's not all. Listen, if we're doing a naval exploration, we might as well build a great lighthouse. And Mount San Michel. Hey, maybe we'll go to cultural victory. Privateer, the best unit, the funnest unit in the game. I mean, unlock meteor sites, villages, destroy barb camps, snatch settlers, builders, amazing unit. But if we stay focused on the game, Filippo Brunelleschi, Brunelleschi is the next great engineer we gotta snatch. We gotta, we gotta take him. 315 production towards a wonder. AI yeah, doesn't deserve it. You grab it. Playing as Theodore, there's one advice i can give you you can never have enough holy sites you can lack in every other district fuck out the districts holy site is your thing it's all you need in other words have some faith in science this great lighthouse is going to contribute to some significant exploration in our age and we got the first industrial zone done. A splendid industrial zone because it has strategic resource and aqueduct. I have another one, plus six. These are the two space cities, Nicomedia and Constantinople. Now, we have extra movement. Boom. Great Barrier Reef. I mean, that's one of the best wonders in the game, right? Why is it so far? Or is it? I mean, this space... Hmm. Lots of cliffs there. Not sure how I can get up there. But, I mean, we can all see the same thing, I hope. And it's a plus six campus. Just gonna go ahead and place a nice national park right there in the Balkan Mountains. It's a pretty little park with a little volcano and desert mountains. 
This here is a more challenging situation. Evidently, there are barbs that neither the Mongolians, who we met, nor Aztecs, nor Mapuches can take care of. Jesus Christ, guys. But I think I have a little spot here. It's all cliffs. Look at it. <laughs> this whole peninsula is cliffs straight up. So I had to... <laughs> I had to go all the way to Mongolia to get my settler in because there are barbs on the coast. I can't, you know, I don't have enough troops. But I'm getting there. You know, everyone is so taken by Ptolemaic Cleo. I mean, Eleanor. Oldie but a goodie, right? I mean... Yes, we finally made it. Oh no, negative 20 loyalty. What do we do? Guys, cultural alliance. After 2000 hours in the game, I finally found out that cultural alliance <laughs> eliminates all loyalty pressure. So we can settle with impunity right here in the face of Mongolia and right on the Great Barrier Reef and get that beautiful campus. You think I'm going to build it? 70 turns? <laughs> Have you learned anything? Marksha is going to build it. Divine Architect is moving in in a minute. I don't know if we have enough faith. Um, between scripture and simultaneous, it's only 100 faith extra that we get in. So... I might, yeah, I might as well go with builders. Uh, public works will work. And instead, maybe a Raj. Get a couple of points, a couple of yields there. I made a decision to go for science. Victory making Constantinople is my space city. Meaning that promote Pingala to the space title, whatever that is. And build an industrial zone there build an encampment military academy to get uh, take advantage of the space race uh policy so we're going to get this city on steroids one of the worst things you want to do though is build the neighborhood because it becomes a prime target for the freaking partisans okay and just don't do it there's no reason for that just Build a couple of farms. I don't know. Say some trade routes instead. But I have been sending Moksha from city to city. Buying uh, districts. Especially small cities. New towns. I mean, it's so easy. Just pop them in. Boom. Done. Especially when you're making 600 faith per turn. That's a cost of a district. <laughs> so this is like game number two out of all games I've played on Deity, that I actually built Oxford University. <laughs> this is amazing. And look at this little neighborhood. I mean, you have everything here. The only thing is missing the ski resort. Uh, that's coming up. Every wonder, pretty much, that I needed to build has been built. And this is mo must be the most countryside... Big Ben I have ever built among the farms next to the horses farm. All right, we got another great admiral. I mean, oh, forms in the armada. That's that's actually useful. It's useful because my little fleet here with a caravel frigate and privateer is actually. Taking care of business. I oh, love privateers, man. So. It's going to be useful to maybe get a, an armado for the frigate. That will be awesome. Another thing that I just did. I levied the units of Walin. And there are a couple of spots here. Um, this island has two tribal villages. And the camp to destroy. I just picked up another village on this uh, little island. It's a cheap units. 
well, it was cheap to levy, but exploration efforts never stop. Be curious to to know what's here. I already found another village. I mean, this is crazy how close it is to the AI, and they don't really uh, explore. That's that's a huge flaw. This city is doing so good, so good in the tundra. No chops. I mean, there are a couple of chops, but it's paying for itself in spades. 25 science. <laughs> it got 25 production. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. It's getting production from this industrial zone. And this in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiles away. But you know what? Mexico City. This is crazy because Mexico City is one of those cities, city states that. It's not really useful until you hit like later era and all of a sudden it's so important <laughs> um not as much singapore but both of these cities provide 15 percent production i just gotta get another national park built because our cities are not very happy um somehow i don't understand how it works we have Five amenities, probably due to Coliseum and um, the entertainment that we have here uh, built. But I do have an entertainment complex here as well. Population, though, is 15 and we're at plus two amenities. I did get to the industrial era, finally. And the Golden Age dedication, obviously it's a Golden Age, is Heartbeat of Steam. And honestly, because we're switching to campuses, uh, building out campuses almost in every city, the production boost is amazing. I mean, it's not much here, right? I mean, this campus is <laughs> plus eight. This little city, plus eight. I mean, I have this little campus that's completely useless, but why not? This is plus six. But most of all, I mean, this little guy. <laughs> 12. Plus 12 campus. Science and production. Heartbeat of steam. On the border, Osaka is rebelling. So I am going to prepare a couple of units to start pillaging because there is so much to pillage here. This is amazing, actually. Science, culture some golden faith oh my god this is going to be so good because once it falls into free city we have like at least i don't know five ten turns before it flips to us and all of that time can be spent pillaging so awesome Maksha is in salonica right now because we just built a aqueduct and a dam and under construction is an industrial zone for this city. Just just for the hell of it. Why the hell not? Plus the regional effects. Again, um, I'm going to multiply production. Pingala. I'm going to leave Pingala in Constantinople with the space initiatives coming up um, as a title. Instead of putting like Magnus, right? As a... As a industrialist because he's got his vertical integration and i just wonder sometimes is it going to be higher than 30 percent space edition no i think 30 percent is high yeah and we have a couple of settlers on the way this guy i think i'm actually going to send him right here um snow city why because of the Amundsen Polar Station. I mean, this thing gives you plus 20% science, and we still have to go through the whole of the science tree after we unlock the station. So the plus 20% science boost, and that's on top of 15% from Kilwa, right? And then 10% production, and if there are five snow tiles within three tiles of the city, the production, all these yields are doubled. But so all it has to do, we have to have a campus or the research lab on a snow, which is <laughs> plenty up in here. And we're going to have 
more than five tiles within the city center. Three tiles of city center. So I'm excited about building the station. And I mean, I would I would think could place it. This will work. This will work. I mean, this is a cool spot on the cliff. And guess what? Ha! Gustav is available. I'm going to pick him up, save up some faith and pick him up as soon as I can so we can use him to build the station. So, it's working out. The cards are just falling right into place. We're colonizing this Avalonia. Avalonia? Yeah, continent. Because, I mean, <laughs> look at all these woods. In sanity so nicopolis is going to take care of all of these as chops for lasers i'm gonna put a spaceport and this is going to be our next space city lasers only and then i have another settler moving westwards because there is actually some land or islands more islands here to settle coal which is cool i mean we have plenty of coal what i'll be interested in is aluminum aluminum is going to be super important right for the lasers aluminum and electricity and i i don't know i don't know if i'm gonna have aluminum i hope usually the desert provides aluminum and jungle i didn't have any jungle here so i don't know we're gonna have to do some exploration and discovery all right the rocketry is here when you launch a rocket, you what does that mean that, that means spaceport and the beginning of space age unfortunately because i am so focused and basically the most efficient player that you can meet i did not move Moksha in time for the spaceport to be purchased. And so uh, I have to wait three more turns. This is great. Fantastic. We did start and almost done with the Panama Canal, though. That's kind of cool, right? I have a canal here. I have a canal here on under construction. I'll just have to move Moksha here, here <laughs> to finish the canals. And then, I gotta still explore that area there. But right now, I'm switching. I switched to the research lab construction in every campus. I purchased a couple, as you can see, to boost science production. Because science is going to have to happen. The scientific research will have to go through the tree, even through the unrevealed technologies right the last revealed technology is nano with a marsk colony we still have to get it to the exoplanet expedition and lasers the off-world tech and we have no idea where it is it could be the last tech on the tree meaning that you still have <laughs> a bunch of turns basically now that moksha is established i think Good spot right there boom done start it up um guess what another thing that i haven't prepared for are builders i have royal society built for this exact purpose so that builders can spend some charges uh towards the project space projects i don't have a single freaking builder ready so, this is one of those things, I mean, I have them prepared, but I wish I had them ready to go. And this means we just need to make sure the right policy is in place. We are running communism now, everybody's equal. Getting a little bit more science out of it, but also collectivization policy is super super useful along with the five-year plan that's pretty s sick 17 production and 22 science what we fear 
The polar Panama Canal is built. Not sure how much economic value it's going to bring to the empire, but we're opening up, uh, opening up that southern polar route. I'm starting to sell out my great works. Don't need them. Really don't need them. And AI actually pays pretty well for certain things. Um, I was able to sell one of the paintings for like a thousand gold. Also, railroads. Railroads to the spaceport. So you don't have to waste time moving your builders to speed up construction. Here, Osaka is ready to be pillaged. A little bit of faith, a little bit of culture, and a little bit of teeny little bit of science as well. We're gonna go for a couple of turns there. The one concern I have is access to aluminum for the lasers. Super handy and timely to reveal the map because we got oil and we also have we have a couple of sources of aluminum that we own. So that's four. We're also going to need to build another encampment, I think, right now. <clears throat> I think we're like at 130. Be more comfortable with a little bit more. Now, where's the rest of it? Oh, oh, wait a second. What about here? Ooh, that's that's a possibility. By the way, there is a passage. Pretty straightforward. I just need to put a city right here and go through it. There are a couple of villages here too. Unexplored. Ridiculous. Oh. Okay. So I have two more sources of aluminum, it looks like I can definitely get my hands on. I think four sources of aluminum, that's plus eight per turn should be enough. That should do it. So we basically need to settle two more cities somehow. What about oil? Not that I need... Okay, there is one out of reach. There's another one up. Dude, <laughs> not a single source of oil within my borders, or even, or even close, even offshore. What the fudge? That is some bull crap. We can't really complain because oh, here's some. I mean, I can't really complain because I don't really need it, but I kind of do need it because because of the boosts like tanks for example you know or or mm, yeah or tanks i should have started concentrating trade routes in constantinople much earlier so i only have like four four domestic trade routes going Again, poor planning, but we're planning to pillage Gifu that is losing loyalty. So that's uh, that's going to give us a little bit of a boost for some gold and uh, faith, it looks like. Maybe a little bit of culture. So you know how we found a spot to get access to aluminum here? Well, guess what? There's a freaking settler, barbarian settler there that... Uh, I'm gonna try to get with the with the privateer. So I'm gonna sail him up and see if we can snatch it because that way it'll be right there next to the source of aluminum. <laughs> Sometimes you get lucky, but but you have to have a privateer in the area to take advantage of it. So that's all about planning, all about strategery. In the meantime, I have a, like a non-stop flow of builders being built, uh, five charge builders, because space projects will be going non-stop basically, but I want them, I want the builders to be ready and in place. I want to have like 20 builders there ready to go and ready to chop those woods in the tundra as well. Guess what I did in my Amundsen city? Instead of building a campus there, 
I started building a harbor in a snow city that has no food and no growth. And now I have to wait until it grows to pop four <laughs> through the trade routes to put a campus in there. Hey, that's what makes it fun. I can't wait for that Amundsen station fast enough to be completed because I still have to get to nanotechnology that's going to take me like 15 turns evidently. So that science boost from the Amundsen station would be fantastic. And now it's time to move Moksha to Tiana to build another spaceport for those Tundra chops. I almost forgot to get Gustav. Oh man, that would be a fail. But here he is, ready to jump into action. And we have a moon landing. Skadish. Awesome. We're a little bit behind schedule. I think I could have shaved like, I don't know, 10 turns if I planned it better. But it's, going, it's still going really, really well. And it only makes sense to plug in international space agency policy that will give us like 175 science nice that's why civics research is more important than science right like i mean those type of policies <laughs> jumps your science return to like a whole other level so the faster you get to those policies to that eight what 11 tier 11 slot government the better focus on that at this point i think i'm gonna make magnus give him vertical integration um he's gonna hang out at nuka media which is hard building a spaceport while moksha is moving around that's a pretty decent production dude i just noticed that portuguese <laughs> Settle the city right next to my source of aluminum. I mean, God. I mean, that that's some serious move there. Some strategery. So I gotta... Gotta figure it out. There seems to be a spot I can settle. So I need to send the settler ASAP. In the meantime, boom. We got a settler here. So we can... Uh, Go and settle a, an aluminum city. So I have ignored this barb cam for way too long. Now it's growing out of control, naturally. Naturally when I'm ready to build a spaceport. <laughs> and, and transport uh, builders for these chops. So I'm going to have to buy some units in, in a pinch. Uh, when I don't have access to oil either this is this is just great fantastic this is one of those memes when the knights are going against uh line infantry it's perfect another news the first aluminum city is settled so we're gonna get access to that valuable resource for the science victory so the first technology revealed is cybernetics which is completely useless for us so i'm gonna go on the limb here and in six or nine turns i'm just gonna go unlock cybernetic and see what else unlocks hopefully the off world is not or the exoplanet tech is not the last one in the list. That would be, that would be insane. That would be mean. In the meantime, if we still get in pillage, that's too bad. I mean, it's good for us. And um, keep building those builders. I'm I'm just gonna fill up all these hexes with builders seriously and be ready for it the next time it comes. Mars expedition is in progress look at this though freaking portuguese is sending the settler what is that a real thing like what is happening here and i'm like freaking out because i i only send the settler here with no unit um so the solution is pretty obvious and simple 
Levy, Mexico, and block their passage and destroy that damn camp. You know what I wish was different about these animations? The rockets. I wish the rockets looked different, you know, every time. Yep, I'm still working this. <laughs> this is, you know, it's they've, they've proven to be resistant bastards. So, field cannon while, and knights while we are sending a mission to Mars. That's how I roll. In other news, well, we got some partisans. And we got some partisans at the worst possible time. I have no units here to do anything. And if they pillage my spaceport, because it takes a little while to repair a spaceport. It's not like a turn or two. So I'm uh, going to have to buy some units and get some musketeers to fight the modern anti-tank. <laughs> That's insane. I can't even buy modern units because no one has oil or willing to sell it to me. So this is kind of a pain in, in the buttocks. The good news is that Smart Materials, the Exoplanet Expedition, we're researching now. So that's that's awesome. Hopefully the laser stack is not too far out. This reminds me of the cavalry call. Do, 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 do. Charge! Boom. Knights and helicopters. That's right. Luckily, no damage was done to the spaceport or, or the other two spaceports for that matter. So I'm going to take some... Uh, precautions <laughs> just to make sure so the smart materials are done we're launching exoplanet expedition soon um the question is where the hell is off-world tech with lasers to speed up exoplanet expedition and so we'll just have to keep going, keep trucking, and uh, hopefully I'll discover it or uncover it or research it soon. Oh, the glorious day. Look what just came up. Let me just show you something. Let me just show you something. Next to last. How awesome. How awesome is that, right? Oh, my God. Well, I got couple of builders ready we just need to wait two more freaking turns i mean i have 1700 science it's insane by the way next turn finishing up this canal linking up this whole thing pretty cool love it this is like a space city here three spaceports i have obviously the spaceport here but also built a spaceport in this city i like this um so we just need we just need a builder to chop out the one laser probably because you do need three woods um nika media has only 135 production so i'm kind of like Weary about that. Constantinople is about 200, but we can probably boost up. It. It's, it's higher for the space projects. I mean, at this point, Exoplanet Expedition already traveled quarter of the way, basically, without any of world lasers. And <laughs> we're the only ones doing it. No one else is even close. Um, so it's traveling one light year per turn right now, right? Let's go chop lasers. Uh, before we do that, though, let's deal with another partisan uprising. Thank you very much. So Constantinople has a laser, couple of turns. Can chop almost 200 production. Boom. We have Nick Media. That's four turns. That's a lot. But we're going to speed it up. 
and then Dirachium. Tiana, starting at 43 turns. Boom, boom. Wow, it's actually my first laser is coming from Tiana. Look at that, Tundra City represents. And then Melatine, I got the stone. Just remember, you need 30 aluminum per one of those lasers, right? Otherwise, you have to use electricity. See, we're down to like 20 aluminum, so you have to make sure you have a good, good income of aluminum. Um, that's a cool spaceport, though. Polar spaceport. So now we're traveling 11 light years per turn. That means we, we build like 10 lasers, chop them out in this course of like three turns. And this is how it's done. Listen, this was a long episode. I tried to compress it, make a story out of it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I surely did this. I mean, this leader, Theodora, she's amazing. Well, granted, you have to get a nice starting location. Really enjoyed it, though. This was fun. Enjoy the game. Play the game. Subscribe and like, by the way. I'd appreciate that. And one more turn.